All right, another day, let's talk about batteries. This time around, some batteries that have been missing in our lives is, at least for me, the lithium iron phosphate batteries. A lot of you guys have been asking for these. These are very popular these days. A lot of devices are being made with them. Uh, and there's many reasons. They're uh, ultra long life. They have like 6,000 cycle life on these. Uh, also, they're really safe. So they're very less reactive. And they're really good for the environment because they don't have uh, rare earth metals. So they don't have cobalt. And I don't think they have nickel. So both of those materials are really expensive now. They're actually going up in price uh, as opposed to going down because they're they're making more and more batteries in the world, right? You would think that because of uh, uh, when something becomes more popular then uh, economies of scale, but that is, that's not the, how it's happening. What is happening is that it's getting, they're getting rare, right? And everybody's fighting for those. And so as a result, the lithium cobalt oxide uh, chemistries, uh, NMCs and all sort of stuff, are going to become like really expensive because of those really hard to get materials. Now, lithium iron phosphate don't have those. And so as a result of that, these are going to become much more uh, easier to manufacture and cheaper to manufacture. And all the advancements that they're doing, uh, the thing that they used to suck back in the day on these is that they used to be really big and heavy. But now the energy density, uh, the gravimetric density uh, is getting really good. So they're almost just as uh, small and light as the lithium cobalt oxide chemistries, right? So much that even some car manufacturers are starting to use them. So these are very, very common uh, and very popular. They're becoming very, very popular uh, for all those reasons, right? And another big reason is that you can make 12 volts, automotive 12 volts. So if that means that you're looking for a replacement for a lead acid battery, boom, this is the only chemistry that can do it. The All the other chemistries, they can. They can do 11 volts, which is too low, or they can make 14 volts, which is too high. This one right here can make 12 volts. And it's almost matches perfectly what the the chemistry on the lead acid does. And so as a result of that, the RV people, they can use it as 12 volts. You can put a couple of these in series, make 24 volts. You can make 36 for golf carts, for forklifts, for RVs, uh, all kinds of applications. And so that is the reason why these are very popular. And we wanted to get our hands on some of these, but we just had them. We hadn't been able to. This is the first time that we get a sizable lot of them. And so we're able to kind of, you know, make this. These are taken off of uh, working equipment for some reason. So I think they have a new version of this battery module. And so as a result of that, the old ones are being replaced, right? And so when you check them, they're like, man, these things are like new. This is a, br a new product that came out into the market and now it's being replaced by the newer version. And these cells have 6,000 cycles, so there's a lot of life in there. And so as a result of that, we're able to get a huge lot of these and repackage them so that they're useful for these. They don't, they don't come in 12 volts, though. they come in some other modules that are in some weird voltages, right? So what we're doing, we're just basically making this little PCB here, the one on the top and the one on the side here, and that's it. And that's, uh, this is a 12 volt battery. This is gonna be the 50 amp hour one. And so this is gonna be the cheapest one. Oh, and by the way, yeah, lithium iron phosphate right now, if you were to buy them, uh, they, they, the cheapest ones you can get, they're around $350, $400 a kilowatt hour, somewhere around there. These are gonna be way cheaper. This is gonna go for $99 and this is uh, 600 watt hours, right? So it's gonna be somewhere around a hundred uh, wait no 150 200 a kilowatt hour something like that right 12 volts and then we're gonna have the 100 amp uh this is the wrong board here we don't have the the, the one that says there but this is the 100 amp 12 volt and this one is going to be available with the built-in bms this one you will have to put your own bms uh, we put these little connectors here so it'll be easier. We'll put a little diagram um, to show you how to do that. But uh, if you don't want to mess with that, then you can just get the bigger 100 amp hour 12 volt battery and it'll have a BMS. It is going to be capable of uh, 200 amps. And so that's still, I'm still kind of working on this too. I want to get it like lower 
uh, less parts, so there's cheaper and easier to manuf manufacture for my guys. Uh, but we're very, very close. I mean, we're like within days of figuring this one out. So today, I'm going to show you this one, the, the entry level, the 50 amp hour, uh, and we're going to put it to test. We're going to test capacity, and then we're going to test uh, power output, right, and see uh, how well it does. All right, so here's our setup. Our battery is connected here. We're going to use this guy here to check the individual cell voltages. And then this one is gonna measure the capacity of the battery and the power going out is going through this meter. Uh, the bottleneck is gonna be definitely these cables here and the XT90 connector. This is rated at 90 uh, amps uh, continuous, but I, you know, I don't know, usually probably 75 is the max that I pushed on that. And then uh, just a 3000 watt inverter with the load. So let's check this out. Let's load it. Okay, so here we go. Starting the load. 20 amps. 40 amps. 50 amps. Ooh, those cells are sagging. 60 amps. 70 amps, 75 amps, let's do 75 amps. All right, let's check the temperature. Ooh, yeah, that, those cables are hot. So almost 50 C on that connector there. Uh, and then that other connector. Now the rest of them are thicker wires, so that's why they're cool. But that is a single one. Let's look from the other side. Whoa, 100C? Okay, that's way too hot. Okay, let's turn that down. Let's turn it down to 50. Okay, that's turning. The temperature is going down there. Ooh, 85C. So those traces there on that board definitely can handle more than 50 amps. We're gonna rate this battery 50 amps on the XT90 connector. And then if you wanna get more, you'll have to connect directly to the uh, to the ring to the terminals of the battery you could definitely do more than that probably up to 100 amps um, and then this this heating problem here this PCB is not gonna be an issue it's just there's not enough room there to put that connector there Now all four cells are below three volts. These uh, cells can go down to 2.5 volts safely. And number one is closed at 2.7. And we hit our target of 50 amp hours. So it just gave us 50 amp hours. 
which is what they're rated at. And as soon as that hits 2.5, we'll disconnect the load. All right, and now it's going really fast, 2.5. There we go. We turn off the load. And there we go, they all bounce back. One of them, number three, bounces above three. Number four bounces above three. Number two bounces above three. And number one is bouncing to 2.9 pretty soon here. 2.9, I might get to 2.23. So there we go, our battery um, put out 50 amp hours and at 50 amp hours then the cells number, cell number one started getting a little bit, well, I hit the mark, right? Uh, as far as this, this got kind of hot. So yeah, I recommend 50 amps, no more than 50 amps through here. Uh, in the future, maybe we'll change this so it can, so it can, is able to get more. So maybe put two of these in here and, uh, straighten out the traces in there. But if you want more, these, look, this battery is not hot at all. It's like barely lukewarm. So these will be able to do about 100 amps, no problem. And we will get to test that in the big battery here. This is two of those uh, with a 50 amp, uh, with a 200 amp uh, BMS, but that's gonna be for next video. We'll test this, we'll test the uh, BMS uh, and the capacity and the whole thing. That's coming pretty soon. These right here are available for ordering now at Jack 35. These will not come with the BMS, so you will have to wire your own BMS. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, I'll make a video later on uh, showing you how to do that, right? Okay, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. here. Yep, you see that? Oh yeah. Well, right behind you is the laser. Oh, it traces the... Uh,